Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the previous episodes, we went over some of the adhkar pertaining to certain acts of worship, as well as what a person recites in the home and when interacting with others. Inshallah, in this episode, we will be going over some of the adhkar pertaining to death. Allah Jalla wa'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. Every single soul shall taste death. A believer is the one who has full conviction that he will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His account will be taken. There is no escape from this return. Hence, he prepares for it. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us in a hadith that whoever's last words are la ilaha illallah there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, this person will enter into Jannah. When pondering over this hadith, a person sees that the words are very easy to utter. However, when a person is in the last moments, it's an extremely difficult time. Only those who believed in La ilaha illallah, who practiced upon La ilaha illallah, who conducted themselves knowing that they would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is hoped that they are the ones who will be able to recite this. And for those who take lesson from others who've passed away, this is evident. Those who lived as good people are able to recite this shahada, this praise and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who didn't are generally unable to recite or utter these few words. Awf ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says that one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed salatul janazah, the salat upon the dead. And I memorized from his dua, Allahumma ghfir lahu warhamhu. Oh Allah, have mercy and forgive this deceased person. Wa'afihi wa'fu anhu. Grant him Afiyah, grant him safety and goodness, and cover his sins. Honor the place that he is going into and make his grave wide. And wash him with water and ice and hail. Look at this beautiful dua. Person is making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives this dead person. The dua carries on. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma naqqihi min al khataya kama naqqayta al thawb al abyad min al danas. O oh Allah, cleanse this person from sin in the same way you have cleansed a white garment. Allahumma abdil hudaran khayran min dari. O oh Allah, Grant him a better house than the house he had in this dunya. وَأَهْلًا خَيْرًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ O oh Allah, grant him better company, a better family than the ones he had in this world. وَزَوْجًا خَيْرًا مِنْ زَوْجِهِ O oh Allah, grant him a better spouse than the one he had in this world. اللهم أدخله الجنة وأعذه من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب جهنم. O oh Allah, enter this person into Jannah and save them from the punishment of the fire and the punishment of the grave. Once a person has been buried, those who are around should make dua for them. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, ask Allah to grant your companion, i.e. the one who has been buried, ask Allah to grant him thabat, to grant him steadfastness, and ask Allah to forgive his sins because he is definitely being asked now. What's important to mention is from the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has left the door of good deeds open even if a person passes away. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us in a hadith that when a person dies, all his deeds come to an end except three. He says, إِلَّا مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ the first deeds that carry on are those charities which are continuous. So whilst a person was alive, if they left a charity that's continuous, they supported a good cause monetarily, etc. And this charity carries on even after they have passed away, bi'ithnillah, they will be rewarded. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, O ilmi yuntafa'u bih. If this person had left any beneficial knowledge, 
as long as people are still benefiting from this knowledge that they taught them. It may be verbally, it may be in the form of students, it may be in the form of books and literature. As long as people are still benefiting from this beneficial knowledge, bi'ibnillah, this deceased person, their reward continues. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, awwaladin salihin yad'u lah. Or if this person had to leave a pious child who carries on making dua for them. As long as they carry on making dua for them, bi'ibnillah, this person benefits whilst they are still in the grave. What's also been reported in the authentic ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is those people who are alive, if they want to do anything for the deceased person, he mentions that there are certain ibadat and acts of worship a person can carry out. What's agreed upon is firstly to give sadaqah on behalf of the dead. So for example, a person may have some money and they give it to a good cause and their intention is for the reward to reach this deceased person. It doesn't have to be a large amount. As long as the intention is there, bi'ibnillah, this person attains the reward. Secondly, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encourages a person to make dua for the deceased. And this is especially true for those family members, those people who are close. A person makes dua for their parents. A person makes dua for their children. A person makes dua for their family members as well as all the Muslimin. That's why some of the scholars mention that if a person had to lose a parent, the obedience of this parent after death is in making dua for them, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to constantly forgive them, to raise their rank and to unite them all in the highest parts of Jannah. This is all goodness that reaches the deceased and it is also obedience on the part of the child. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also informs us that if a person had to perform umrah or hajj for the deceased, bi'ibnillah, this reward reaches them. When consoling the family and the relatives of the deceased, one of the duas taught to us by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a person says, لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذَ وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what he has taken and what he gives. It all belongs to Allah jalla wa ala. The fact that he blessed you by giving you this person, this relative, this parent, this child, it always belonged to him. He gave it to you and he is the one who takes it away whenever he wishes. لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذَ وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّ And every single thing has its specific time. When you ponder over this dua, where a person consoles somebody else on their loss, you find again that there is full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and full conviction that every single thing belongs to him. And we will all return. And even though it may be difficult, it may be hard, the believer still submits to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in the next episode, we'll be going over some of the general adhkar taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These adhkar, a person is able to read and recite at any time. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also informs us that there are certain rewards for these specific adhkar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who mention him, who remember him at all times. Amin.